Hi guys, it's Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Today we're making another light up card using our easy lights from Pear Blossom Press. And I'm in a Halloween mood, so I'm going to be making one using this stamp set from last year. I will check to see if it's still available, but it's called A Wee Bit Wicked from Picket Fence Studio. And don't you just love that witch? <laughs> so to start off with, I'm going to stamp out big witch image. Um, from this stamp set, which looks like I didn't clean it well enough last time I used it. But we're going to go ahead and stamp that and color her up. I'm also going to use embossing powder for it because I love the way that it looks over black ink. So this is some um, Versifying Claire in Nocturne. I'm going to go ahead and add plenty of that ink all over. And we're going to stamp this a couple of times to make sure we get good coverage before embossing. Let's go ahead and bring out some embossing powder. I'm going to be just using some Wow Clear over this. I do love the clear embossing over black because it looks like black embossing. And it doesn't take as much, it's not nearly as much trouble as trying to emboss with black embossing powder. Black embossing powder, I would tend to get it places that I didn't want it. be using my new Ahuhu markers for this. Don't know if I'm going to have the blends right, but we're going to give it a shot. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to start off, I think, I want her to be green. So I'm going to start off with some greens. And what you should do whenever you're coloring anything is do a swatch first. Make sure the color is what you think. I'm thinking that's a little bit darker than what I want for a base color. also had done some swatches so I would not have to swatch everything out before looking at it. GY, this one is a GY1. It is kind of a bluish green. Um, do I want blue green or do I want yellow green? kind of want yellow green. I don't want to make her look gross, right? Because she's a witch. So I think those two are going to go good together. So I'm going to just start off by just coloring her up with this green color and then I'll come back in with some of the darker for the shadows. And I'm going to avoid her little tea. Although her teeth are probably green too. I don't know. And this is really easy coloring because there's so much detail to the stamp in and of itself. You don't really need a whole lot of anything. So. Also, there's all these little lines to kind of show you where the shading should go. And then just blend it out a little bit with the lighter color. Okay, so now we have our green witch face. Love that. Okay, now we've got this little bitty brown mouse sitting here, so I think I'm going to do him up. And for browns, I've got... The YR1 looks like it might work well. 
Okay, I'm going to say he's done. For the hat, I think I want to go with some purples, and I really, really like this dark, dark purple here. But, of course, we can't go all dark, so I think I'm going to do the R11 to go along with the P5. So, first I'm going to put down the lighter pretty much everywhere. And then we're going to add a little bit of this darker purple in all of the shadow areas. And then going back over again with this thin lighter. just off to the side cleaning off some of that extra so I can try to blend out a little bit more in the middle and make it a little bit lighter. There we go. I think that looks good. These are nice and juicy markers. And that's it for the color. Now that our witch is all colored up, we're going to die cut them out. And the paper is a little bit warped from having been die, um, from having been heat embossed, so I'm going to make sure to tape my die in place to make sure that it doesn't shift. And that's it for our main image. Okay, so what we're going to do, though, to add the lights, I did not color her little beady eyes because I don't need to. Instead, we're going to poke her eyes out. <laughs> we're going to poke her eyes out, and that is where our lights are going to go. So I went ahead and die cut out some additional witches out of some black cardstock to go behind this one just because she's warped. She's warped. I want it to go flat. So I'm going to go ahead and glue everything together real quick for those. And this is going to help to flatten our witch back out because she was a little warped. And I went ahead and I did three of the black, so I'm going to layer up um, three behind our witch here. So next what we're going to do is we're going to poke her little beady eyes out. And I'm just using a pokey tool for this. And it's a little difficult to do it because of how many layers of cardstock I have. But I was able to get all the way through. Perfect. Got one of her eyes done. Let's get the other one. There we go. So now her eyes... Yeah, now we can... Yeah. Anyhow, now we've had her eyes poked out. So next what I want to do is I'm going to see what it's going to look like if I don't add any vellum. So let's take a look. I'm going to just put our little light there. After I add a battery, that's important. So the way that these work, if you have not used these lights before, is we've got a little battery pack down here with a button, and then we've got three wires. This one, again, is from the Easy Lights from Pear Blossom Press. So we've got our battery. I'm going to just tuck our battery right in. And then we press the button, and then our lights light up. I always recommend testing everything before you get started. And I'm going to go ahead and put one of the little LED lights. Now, the LED lights at the end of the wires, one side is going to have a bump, a yellow bump. The other side is going to be flat. The bump is the LED. So we're going to want it to face forward. And this is the part that always gives me trouble trying to hold the wires where I want them. So I'm just putting that there right over where the eye is. And let's just hold it in place. And I'm going to hold it in place with a piece of tape. This is not the final. And I'm basically wanting to decide, do I want to add some vellum? Do I need the, the beady eyes to be a little bit bigger? I'm thinking not. I think it would be kind of a cool surprise just to see her eyes light up. So let's turn that over so it's got the bump part facing forward. There we go. And then I can add my tape down right over the top there. 
We're just going to do it with one. And then press the button. <laughs> I think that looks fabulous. That is going to work great. So I think, actually, I am going to leave that one attached just like that. We're good. I'm going to take another one and do the same thing with a second eyeball. I get tickled. I definitely get tickled. I mean, I get an idea and then I start putting it together and it works. And it's like, oh my God, this is so cool. Okay, so let's let's test it again. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh my God, I love that. Okay. Now you notice that we have a third light. We do have a third light. That's okay. For this one, all we need to do is cut it off. We're not going to use it. And I'm going to cut it fairly close to the end, but make sure I don't cut the others. So I'm just going to snip it off. And to prove that it still works, I'm going to press the button. And her eyes still light up. Fabulous. <laughs> oh, yes, isn't that awesome? Oh, God, I love that. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Now we need to assemble the rest of our card. Okay, I'm going to keep the card design pretty basic. My typical design. We're going to have a piece of pattern paper for our background. I'm going to cut that down to four by five and a quarter. And keeping the spiders for another project. Yes. And this is going to go onto a black card base. So it's going to go like that. Okay. And our witch is going to go on top. Now, how? How am I gonna, what am I going to do with this guy? This is the next part that we have to figure out, right? Well, it's going to be fairly easy. I'm going to cut a slit in our spider paper behind here. So I'm going to actually mount her down flat onto the cart. So we know where her eyes are. See, I think I want her a little bit lower down. I'm going to have her right here, I think. So right there. And then I'm going to just mark where I've got my thumb. And that's where we're going to cut a slit. And I don't know where my my regular cutter is. So I'm going to kind of just poke a hole and then use my scissors to cut a, a line there. You know, the way we did in high school before we learned how to use craft knives. And she's a big enough image that it's really not going to matter too much where this goes. So now I'm going to slide my mechanism through there. And we can put her right over the top. Get her hair unhooked from the wire. And then we can get everything else situated as we want it. So this is going to be the main part of our card. Now that's the thing. You don't, with these products, it is super cool because you don't have to worry as much about where all of this is going to go. Where are the mechanisms going to go while you're designing your card? You can put your card any which way you want to, and this is almost an afterthought because of those wires. Okay, so that was an issue. I was using mint tape, which is a paper tape, to hold my little lights in place, and it wasn't strong enough for while I was doing all of the gluing, so I did have to replace that. So make sure that you're using a better, um, a more tacky tape. There, there are low tack tapes and a lot of them are really good. I do love my, um, best ever craft tape from Spellbinders, but you could also use something like scotch tape if you want. Okay. So we want, we want her lower. So let's turn that back around. Pulling that fairly tight. Put her in place. Test. Make sure the lights still work. Yay! Okay, now I'm going to place that down and give everything time to dry. So next we need a sentiment. So the one that I picked out is the one that says, just a wee bit wicked. And I'm going to heat emboss that over some black cardstock. But I am going to go ahead and use some white pigment ink for this because otherwise... Yeah, otherwise I'm not going to be able to see whether or not I have any ink down. Ask me how I know. I have struggled with that. I'm also going to use 
some anti-static powder to hopefully control where the embossing is. This is one of those techniques that I've done. I've done a lot of in the past. I don't really do as much of it recently, but I do need to do more. It's one of those things I don't practice with enough, which is the reason I have some problems trying to get it done. So let's go ahead and stamp that with some white ink. And we're going to put a couple of layers to make sure we've got enough down. I'm also happy I'm using pigment ink because, of course, it stays damp longer, which makes it much easier for our embossing powder to grab a hold of. Thanks, Deadly. By the way, you see the red banner? <laughs> I know, you didn't know that it was going to pop up on the screen. I'll just edit that out. Whoa. Okay. So let's go ahead and cover that in some white embossing powder. This is just some old embossing powder that I have from Recollection that I need to use up. And that looks like coverage is pretty much perfect. Yay. I love it when that happens. Let's go ahead and heat this one up. Okay, and then we can just wipe off the excess. Let me put away the rest of my embossing powder. And now that just needs to be the die cut. So next what we're going to do is we're going to put everything together. And this is the magic that's going to make that happen. We need enough space behind our card for our little mechanism to fit, right? For our little, our little battery pack. Now the battery pack is fairly thin. And Amanda at Pear Blossom Press did a fabulous job getting it the right size and all the things and she has just been wonderful absolutely love her so you can see this is really really thin well what she came up with to make our lives easier is the world's best foam tape this stuff is double thick so it's the perfect thickness for this and i'm going to show you a couple other things that make it even more magical love this stuff and I can't wait for some of the new things that she's going to be coming out with soon to come out so we've got our our panel here we've got our card front and we're going to use the tape just like you would with any of your cards to basically give it a little bit of dimension pop it up right oh one thing i didn't do yet i need to take this off that's one of the things that's magical you can remove this it is repositionable for 30 minutes and it's not going to rip your cardstock fabulous one thing i hadn't done yet is we have to decide where we're going to put this so we can put a button we need to tell the recipient where to push so we know we're putting this down here so i'm thinking the best place for this guy would be up at the top and maybe we'll use one of the spiders as our <laughs> that's too funny i'm gonna use one of the spiders as my um as my place for my button she's also got a cool stamp set that is perfect for this that's got all the little sayings that you might need and one of them it says press here. And that's the one I'm going to use. I use it a lot, so it's not really wanting to stick to my um, to my acetate anymore. And I know this is overkill, but this is the block that I have on hand. You make sure I put this right side up. I think that's the right direction. Which means I'm going to stamp it first. I'm going to stamp it first onto the card where I'm going to be covering it up. Make sure it's the right direction. Okay, so I had it upside down. That is good to know. I'm not going to move it. I'm just going to turn it around. And... There we go. Just add a little bit of ink there. And I know that if I do it this way, it's upside down. If I do it this way, it's right side up. So let's stamp that little, 
Okay, I think that's going to be a little too close to the edge. Let's press, let's do it this one. Okay, we're going to go with it. So now we have a little button on our spider that says press here. Okay, so now what we can do is we can add this guy to the back of our card. I'm going to use some double stick tape to put him in place. Okay, and then I just need to make sure that my little button is right behind the body of that spider. And I have a feeling I'm going to have to do another stamping on there because it is a little blurry. You can't really see what it is. But I'm going to leave this as is. We're going to put the rest of it together and I will figure out the rest on that. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to add our foam to the back of this card panel. And we can tape our little wires down so they're not getting in our way. I think I'll do that first. And I'm going to add a little in the center here so that we don't have saggy middle. There we go. So you saw a couple of the things that are, are great about it. It's repositionable. It's the perfect thickness. The other thing is how easy the release paper comes off. I absolutely love this foam tape, and I can't wait till she comes out with some regular thickness so that I can use it for everything. Love this tape. So I'm going to just place this down. I like to have a little bit of a border all the way around, so about an eighth of an inch. There we go. So if we press there, we have our lights come up. Love that. Oh my god. Next we're going to add our witch, <laughs> our little saying on here. And I think I'm going to use some regular thickness um, foam tape for that. Just to give it a little bit of dimension, not a lot. I mean, we've got dimension on the card already. We don't really need a lot. And the main reason I wanted to do a little bit is so that it pops up just a little bit over our witch. And we could leave this just as is, but I do feel that I need to add something for that part. So, along with these stamps are also some dies. So... I'm thinking that the circle is probably about the right size to hold the press here. So now we have our little press here. And I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the back of it. And put it down <laughs> right on the body of our, of our spider. So it looks like it's supposed to be there, right? And now it lights up. How fun is that light-up card? I absolutely love this. Isn't that just so cute? Anyway, you guys be sure to check out the next video that I do using my light-up cards. I've also got a brand new course over on my website that is basically an intro to light-up cards. It is my light-up card basics mini course. You'll want to check that out if you are interested in finding out more about different ways that you can make light of cars. Anyway, you guys have a wonderful night and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.